children. Um, the Wiki Education Foundation is not the same thing as Wikipedia. We are an independent nonprofit and we work specifically with educators to develop teaching resources that they can use with their students um, and to really bridge conversations between what kind of place can Academia play in Wikipedia, the largest free information resource. Um, I'm just going to start today with a quick video. I think that it should work, but I'm just not. When I do my talks normally, I'm, I'm not um, like stuck to a microphone. So if I start wandering and you can't hear me, just tell me to focus back to the microphone. Um, all right, so that always gives me chills when I watch it, just because I think that it really, for the purposes of today, helps illustrate what being a digital citizen can look like, especially when you think about Wikipedia. So I'm going to start real broad and just define what I think a digital citizen is. And to start, I really, I just went to Wikipedia and I <laughs> took a screenshot. Um, and, and according to Wikipedia, being a digital citizen is someone who uses information technology to engage in the world. Not just that, but they do so regularly and effectively. And for when I read that, I was like, okay, but, but what does that mean? So I kept reading. And um, the article continues. Being a digital citizen is not just about using the internet for one's own needs, um, but about using that information to promote equal economic opportunity, political participation, and civic duty. And I thought that that was really Im interesting for me, especially when we think about how students should be digital citizens. Um, and if we take a moment, oh, sorry, to, to stop and think about that definition, do, do any of us really engage in the world in this way? Um, are any of us really promoting equal economic opportunity in our work? Um, are we being civic citizens? Um, and how can we use Wikipedia to help think about the world in this way? So I think the key here is digital literacy. Um, it's a heavy burden, one that I'm not sure we all have the answers to. but. 
maybe my slides are in the wrong order, but that's okay. Um, so when I think about digital literacy, we think about discerning good information from bad information, thinking about what's a proper citation versus a bad citation, um, good quality information from bad quality information, and we're not the only ones thinking about this thing. The Stanford History Education Group did a study in November of 2016, so a very poignant time in all of our lives, and they wanted to know what the media literacy skills were like among high school, college, and middle school students. And what they found was pretty troubling. Um, their results were that most young people cannot discern good information from bad information. They do not know the difference from real news and fake news, and, and most tended to simply believe what they read online. And this is, I think, a great summarizing quote here. To summarize, overall, young people's ability to reason about information on the internet can be summed up in one word, bleak. And I really think that that's a problem. I hope that you do too. Um, and I think my takeaway from this is that our students are very digitally savvy. I think most of us are also very digitally savvy. We can download apps. We, some of us know how to use Snapchat. But most people aren't digitally literate, and I think for us in this room, that is a problem I want to help us solve. So, yes, digitally literate. Um, in order to become effective digital citizens, our students need to learn digital literacy. But how do we, as educators in the classroom, actually help our students achieve those skills? Um, how do we help them become digital citizens? Um, and that is where I want to take a step back and talk about where Wikipedia fits in, which is kind of exciting. So, first of all, to Wikipedia, fake news is not a new phenomenon. When the site was you know, curated for the first time in 20, 15 years ago, um, there was immediately a policy on how to use reliable sources, how do we cite properly the information that we're sharing, how do we make sure that what we share is high quality. And yes, there are problems, and yes, the site is not perfect, but we take this very seriously. Um, so this is just one of the first, one of the first things. Um, all right, so taking a step back, a little bit more broadly, what is the scope of Wikipedia? So Wikipedia, we all use it, I hope most of you probably in the last couple of days have probably used it to find something. There are over 5 million articles on the English Wikipedia alone, and there are an additional 290 some on other languages that also have their own curated list of articles around the world. Um, like in the English Wikipedia in January of 2017, there are 8 billion page views. If you look across all wiki projects in the month of January, there are 18 billion page views. I think that's just a phenomenal number when you think about how many people are in the world versus how many people are using Wikipedia. Um, any given month, there are about 500 million unique visitors um, who then curate that. So it's pretty big. It's pretty expansive, which is very exciting. Um, the Knight Foundation did a study last year also trying to help illustrate just the pre what the prevalence of Wikipedia was in all of our lives. And what they found when they compared mobile usage is that Wikipedia is used significantly more often, more than two times more often than any other news site by the public. And if the number is here, for those of you who can't read, CNN was the second closest, and they're, they're uh, using your phone going to the web, 21 million page views, Wikipedia, 52 million page views. Um, so that's just one way that we can visualize how prevalent Wikipedia is in all of our lives. Another way is when we think about, let's focus in on a specific content area. How do people access healthcare information on the web? And Dr. James Howman, who is a longtime Wikipedian, has been involved in our program for years, he wanted to answer that question. Where do people go um, on Wikipedia or on the internet to find healthcare information? And what he found is that people go to Wikipedia at a rate more high than the National Institute of Health, WebMD, the Mayo Clinic, the NHS, and the World Health Organization. This despite the fact that most of us think Wikipedia is less reliable, less informative, always a little bit worried. Is the information there we're going to get going to be totally accurate? Um, and even so, we're more likely to go to Wikipedia. So that's just one way to kind of visualize the prevalence that Wikipedia plays in all of our lives. Um, but who writes all of these articles? Who's creating all this content? There are about 30 million registered users. Those are people who actually have a username, which, by the way, you can all create if you want. Um, but of those, there's a very small number that um, contribute on a regular basis. In August of 2016, when I last pulled this number, there were only about 3,000 people on the English Wikipedia who had more than 100 edits. 
All of these people are volunteers. They are all dedicating their time to write an encyclopedia for free. The Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that runs Wikipedia, does not pay editors to create content. They just help keep the site alive. They save every edit ever made on every article. It's a pretty um, expansive amount of information there. Um, <clears throat> And so in order to kind of figure out some of the work that this community is doing, which is, again, all volunteer driven, I want to give you guys a really quick brief on what are some of the policies that happen behind the scenes on Wikipedia. I think this will help shape the way that you think about the site in the future. Um, and over the last 15 years, these policies have been kind of agreed upon by the community. And the first one, oh yeah, the set of core principles, yep, yep, yep. The first one I want to talk about is the fact that Wikipedia is free. I think this is the most important thing about Wikipedia. It's a fundamental understanding of the way the site wants to operate, and it's always going to be free. And I think that that is very incredible. And if we kind of think back to my definition of digital literacy, one of the core concepts there was helping promote equal economic opportunity. And if we think of information as a form of economic currency, working on Wikipedia helps answer that question. How do I promote that? How do I work with my students to promote that? Um, on Wikipedia, you're summarizing paywalled academic literature for a general audience in a context that is free. I think that is one of the most powerful takeaways for me um, about digital citizenry and using our students for that. Just wanted to pop in over there. Um, a couple other policies, just really quickly. Um, verifiability. So how do we verify that the information that we share on Wikipedia is correct? Every user is asked to think about not just the type of work that they're citing, whether it's an academic piece, a blog piece, a news piece, but also who the author is, where are they coming to that piece from, um, who is publishing the work, Oxford University Press versus something else, and making a, to make an informed decision about what that means for verifiability. Um, another of the core concepts on Wikipedia is that everything should have a neutral point of view, which in academia is really interesting because we kind of know that there's really no true neutrality in the world, but Wikipedia asks us to try. Um, they ask that we represent fairly, proportionately, and without editorial bias all the views published by a reliable source on any given topic. Um, the next one, which is kind of related to that, is do or undo weight. This is part of determining what kind of view we should share within any given topic article. Um, an example of this is the Earth. If you look at the article about the Earth, there is no mention of the flat Earth hypothesis because the scientific community has come to an understanding that the Earth is not flat, the Earth is round. And so when we're thinking about do or undo weight, Wikipedia asks us to consider what are the minority views that the academy and that the world carries around any given topic, and we should represent those fairly and proportionately to those views. Um, the other thing that I definitely want to talk about is notability. This is a very interesting concept. As part of my job, the majority of my job, I talk to instructors like yourselves about um, promoting Wikipedia in their classrooms. I, I go to academic conferences, talk to people in any given field about how to talk to political science and how to use political science on Wikipedia. And probably the most common question I get from people is, oh, well, why don't I have an article yet? I'm an academic. I publish all this amazing work. Why is nobody writing about me? Um, and I just want to hedge some bets that maybe some of you might ask me a question about that later and, and talk to you a little bit more deeply about what notability means on Wikipedia. Um, so notability is a test given to determine if a topic deserves its own article. Um, in a really vague sense, if a topic receives significant coverage from third parties, independent sources, it is presumed to be suitable to have its own article on Wikipedia. So in academia, just the fact that you have a PhD, just the fact that you've written a dissertation isn't enough to prove notability. Notability comes from third party sources saying why that work is valuable, what it's contributed to the field, and what's happening. And this is really confusing because when you think about Wikipedia, there is an article for every single Game of Thrones character, every single Star Trek character, every single pretty much everything um, has an article on Wikipedia and you're thinking, but what about my work or my colleagues' work and all this important work happening in academia? Don't we also deserve coverage? Um, and I just want to share the example of Tyrion Lannister, who's one of my favorite characters from Game of Thrones. Um, and this article is actually a good article according to Wikipedia standards, which is in a really vague sense. It's established that it's credible, that the citations are, are well cited, that it's relevant, and um, comprehensive, 
And when we look at the number of citations provided on this, I literally couldn't even fit it in the same screenshot. There's like over 100 citations for why Tyrion, why the character is interesting, the awards that the show has won, all of these third-party sources saying why this is quote-unquote valuable or notable. And when we think about our lives and our academic careers, um, our work in general, some of us, probably yes, can provide some citations for why our work is valuable. But few people really, I think, uh, can provide so many. So that is maybe one way to think about notability, which is interesting. Um, all right, so the last one I want to just briefly share with you guys today is conflict of interest, which is, again, um, the second most common question I get asked, which is, why can't I write the article about myself? Um, and the simple answer is, you probably shouldn't. Um, Wikipedia asks that we do not edit articles about ourselves, our families, our places of work, um, friends, clients, or employers. And this is kind of for the same reason that Wikipedia is ad-free, this importance on neutrality and trying to keep the information as neutral a reflection of the world as possible. And if you're writing about yourself or your employer or your, your family member, um, you know, it's assumed that that's going to be much, much harder. So we ask that you don't do that. So now that you have kind of like this vague sense that there are policies in place behind the scenes on Wikipedia, why and knowing that those policies exist, maybe you did know, but you never looked into them, maybe you didn't, this is the first time you're ever hearing about it, I gotta wanna ask the group and provide a couple of my own responses for why do we tell students not to use Wikipedia? What do we gain in that moment? Um, I think we're losing out on a teaching opportunity, and that's why I'm here trying to convince you all to do this in your classes. Um, but I think there are really a couple of main reasons. Um, the first, from the student's perspective, like you as an educator are saying, I think my students don't even know what an encyclopedia is. I worry that they don't know the difference between a tertiary source, a secondary source, an original piece of research, um, a primary source. And in such, I cannot trust them to go to this site and make some kind of understanding about what they're reading and make a decision about how it's reliable. I think also, from the instructor perspective, there's a little bit of misunderstanding about how the content is created and tracked, right? Maybe you didn't know that all these policies are in place. Or maybe you've just heard about, you know, the people who are vandalizing articles and putting mis, you know, misinformation online and, oh, but those didn't get deleted immediately. But I'm hoping that after today, you'll kind of walk away from this feeling a little bit differently. Um, and my, my challenge for you guys today, and as I kind of finish up here in the next few slides, is to actually take a moment to say, don't we want our students to have those skills? Don't we want them to know what it means to be a tertiary review of a secondary subject? Don't we want them to walk into any site on the internet and say, I can tell what a good source versus what a bad source is? And if we say, don't use Wikipedia just because that's easier, aren't we missing out on that opportunity to make a difference in the way that they perceive information on the internet? Um, so yeah, my challenge for you. You should do some work on that. But at the same time, I also don't want to overlook that Wikipedia is not perfect, right? I've shared all these really great policies, which I think are super impactful, but it's not you know, perfect, and that's okay. Some of the things that you guys might have heard about are the content gaps on Wikipedia, and so, this is one of the main things that Wikied hopes to focus on, is kind of filling these content gaps. And one way that we can visualize those gaps of information on Wikipedia is by looking at the list of featured articles. So featured articles are the best of the best on Wikipedia. They go through a comprehensive peer review, trying to think about how well written is the article, is it neutral, does it follow the specific formatting guidelines, does, are there images, are the citations appropriate? And when we look at the featured articles by content area, what we find is that there are over 600 in warfare and military history. There are 400 in sports, um, another 300 in music, 200 in video games. But when we look at academic content, we find a, a big gap. And you know, I think one reason why this is very obvious is how many of you in this room actually edit Wikipedia? <laughs> I would ventured, and other than the couple of Wikipedians in the room, not many of you. You don't have the time, the capacity, but you do have this huge knowledge base in your own head. Um, and so, so yes, we have the knowledge that Wikipedians are not usually academics, but, but why do these kinds of gaps persist? Um, one of the reasons, which you might have heard about, um, is that 85% of the contributors to Wikipedia are men. 
the majority of whom are young, white, and from the Western world. Um, and uh, you know what? These people are volunteering their time to edit an encyclopedia for free. I'm not taking away from the work that they're doing. But they are definitely not a reflection of the world. They are not a reflection of the sum of all human knowledge. Um, and you know, these gaps persist because of the editorship, because we don't have people coming to the table from different points of view, from different places around the world, and writing about the things that they are passionate about, the things that they're interested in, like military history, or video games, or Game of Thrones. Um, so this creates a gender gap. So this is maybe a term that you might have heard related to Wikipedia is that you know only 15% of the contributors are women. But not only that, this is actually systematically changing the way that Wikipedia is, is created and curated. Um, one way that we can kind of visualize this is as of like literally May 7th, 16.9% of the biographies on Wikipedia are about women. Um, and again, I think this is very much a reflection of that 85 to 90 percent editorship is that they're not writing about moments in history or experiences that they're not familiar with or passionate about. And so these kinds of gaps create problems not just in who the, the viewpoint of the editor but also in the way that we access information. Um, so I actually deleted a couple of the slides I had because I want to focus in on a really quick thing related to Gardner's keynote earlier this morning. Um, around hyperlinks, which I really think is interesting. So this is, I'm kind of going off the cuff here. But basically, if we think about digital citizenship as the ability to hyperlink, right, and we think about it as action, information is only so good as how readily available it is. And on Wikipedia, it's no different. We have a term on Wikipedia called orphan pages, and that's a page that exists but doesn't link to anything else. It means that nobody can find it. When we have a, a group of editors who are thinking about the world in one very specific way, or thinking about connect information in a very specific way, in ways that make sense to them personally. It's really a bigger question about how do we gatekeep knowledge? How do we organize the world in a way that's accessible, that's usable, that speaks to people from all different backgrounds? And I think that when we're thinking about digital citizenship and linking, I think Wikipedia is very much a part of that. Like, has anyone ever? fallen down the Wikipedia black hole, where you're just like, that article leads to that article, which is like, where am I even going right now? And you cannot do that for certain women's issues, for certain minority issues, because they don't link to other things, because they don't link to pages about chemistry. More like male chemists, biographies link to the chemistry articles than their female colleagues. There's also significantly less biographies about female chemists than there are about the male chemists in their field. And I think that all of that is kind of very problematic. Um, so I would encourage you to think more about that as well. OK, so some background on Wikipedia. But this brings me to hear what I'm talking about today, teaching with Wikipedia. Um, our little logo is don't say it, write it. We want your students to help fill those content gaps on Wikipedia in a classroom project. The idea is really simple. You replace a research paper or some kind of assignment in your course with a Wikipedia project. Students are very much doing a service learning assignment. They're bringing paywalled academic research forward for people outside of the ac academic world to access. They're researching, writing, engaging in digital literacy, media literacy. Um, they're interacting with a live audience, having to learn about a community outside of their own. And at the end of the day, this is just not busy work. This work will hopefully go live on Wikipedia at the end of the term and is going to be read by people all across the world. Um, in the spring of 2017, so the current semester that's just ending, uh, WikiEd supported 358 classes and over 7,000 students doing this project. A couple of those instructors are here today and will be at our workshop um, right after this in this room if you want to hear about their experiences. And every term we do an instructor survey where we ask instructors to help give us feedback about how we can better our tools, but also just to reflect on their experiences teaching. Um, and this is my favorite quote I share all the time. This instructor said that my students produced much higher quality work and reported feelings of pride in their research and writing. One student reported that it was the best assignment she had in her entire college career. It was wonderful as an instructor to see students excited to make a contribution and share their knowledge. Um, I think that's really reflective of, of just how powerful this assignment can be. We also, in the fall of 2016, we did a student learnings outcome study. And, and that study is actually going to be readily available. And all the data is going to be open source. Um, I think it's supposed to be published next month, I hope. 
Um, but one of the really quick findings that we found is that 98% of the instructors that we worked with said that the Wikipedia assignment was better at teaching digital literacy than a traditional assignment. Um, so I hope that will convince you to, to also participate. So a really quick overview of what that assignment looks like. All students are asked to create a Wikipedia account, to take some trainings about how to edit, how does the community work, what are some of those policies and guidelines. Um, they're all assigned to evaluate an article on Wikipedia for quality, so we would actually work with you to say, oh, I'm a political science instructor, and I'm working specifically on you know, the U.S. election process, so I'm going to assign my students to read the articles on Wikipedia about the U.S. election and compare those to our, our lectures and say, how well referenced are they? How accurate? What does Wikipedia get right? What does it get wrong? Go to that citation section, read the references, make an analysis of which ones are recent, how old are they, are they relevant, and learn how to evaluate that information. And at the very end, um, the students are going to be asked to actually improve a con something in their field, to click that edit button and make a contribution. And the scope of that assignment can be very different. It could just be three homework assignments that happen in one week, and the actual editing could be add a citation. Um, but if you have the time and the capacity, we would like to encourage you to do kind of a full research project. And this is something that WikiEd provides all the free teaching resources that you could need to do this in your classroom. And what that assignment looks like in a very broad sense is the first assignment, students create their accounts. The second assignment, students learn how to evaluate Wikipedia. Um, the third assignment, which could happen in the third week, it could also happen in the second week, it could happen in the eighth week, just depends on what works for you. The students are asked to research possible topics. I can work with you to pick out those topics ahead of time. Um, eventually, they're going to be asked to do a bibliography, to work with their librarian on campus to figure out what kinds of well-referenced, verifiable resource, research resources do I want to use in my article. They're going to be asked to read those references and actually write a draft of their work. Um, and then eventually, they're going to do a peer review, which we actually build into our basic assignment template. And it's not really until the second two-thirds of the assignment um, that the students move their work live. So this is a whole process. Okay, yep, I'm almost running out of time. And um, at the end, they do a checklist. And anyway, so a couple examples of student work, just so that you kind of visualize, what does it mean for my student to edit Wikipedia? California Assembly Bill 540 hadn't been edited since 2014, and this is a bill that allows undocumented students to pay in-state tuition in the state of California, and a student in our program significantly expanded that article um, added 20 references, and now if a student wants to learn, does this apply to me? Does it apply to my peers? What does this bill do? Where is the money coming from? What other states have similar legislatures? They're able to go to Wikipedia and find that information. Okay. That's us. That's my nonprofit. Um, that was my last slide. I know. I'm so, I, sorry. I'm sorry. We started a couple minutes late. All right. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, all the students that we work with have access to the best teachers, the best libraries. They are the lucky ones. They have so much privilege. So if we're not teaching our students to take advantage of that privilege to be digital citizens, I think we're really missing a learning opportunity there. Um, and Wikipedia asks us to imagine a world in which every human being on the planet has equal access to the world's knowledge. And I invite you to join me in making that reality. Okay. <laughs>